has has so blinded the eyes of people that they cannot see a lot of times. They, they've lost sight of what they are and what they were created to be and what God made you to be. If, if you ever lose sight of that, you begin to play. Satan can start getting you to play with something that looks supernatural. And that, that goes from anywhere from a religious service to an occultic service. You will hear people yell, you're, you're cults, you're cults, you're occultic, you're cults, you're cults. And yet they dress their children up like demons and send them door to door one time a year and call someone else a cult. I mean, how twisted can you get on that? Someone who has nothing to do with that is called evil. And someone who has everything to do with that is called good. Something's wrong with that picture. It's the, the enemy, the God of this world has blinded the eyes. Even the, the one who founded the church of Satan said these words before he died. I don't know if he was on his deathbed, but he said it. He said, at least Christians let their children celebrate, worship the devil one night a year. Who said that? The one who founded the church of Satan. He's speaking of Halloween. Oh, yeah, he did. He said, welcome to Halloween after he said that. And, and people, if you say something against it, you're just cult. Really? I don't have anything to do with that. I won't touch that. But the ones who touch it come against those who don't. Something's wrong. Isn't that, isn't that something's wrong with that? What is it? It's the world of deception. And it goes from the highest all the way down to the lowest. It's mingling evil with good. And if you're chatting in, slamming us, I'm talking about you. of the demon you dress them as because they'll carry its traits from their own. Remember that. Hallelujah. Oh, brother. I would rather be on the side of God. I would rather be in the this fight. Leave behind lying. Leave behind dishonor. Leave behind lust. Leave behind handling evil. Leave behind mistrust. Walk on through into the new year with your banner and the blood held high. It's the time to be alive in 2025. Oh yeah, 2025. Say it. 2025. Yeah. 2025. It's the year to be alive in 2025. Come on, say it. 2025.
I think in this time, in this inflection point that we find ourselves in, it is your perfect time to make a turn and to make a choice. A choice. Why choose? Yeah, well, it come up again. I guess I'll have to. I want to tell you of a, of a prophecy. And I thought I wouldn't tell this at all, really. And then the Lord says, today. And it's in Deuteronomy chapter 30. And I think verse 19, you can put that up for the world to see. Where's that coming from? The Bible. But, well, well, what kind of Bible do you use? It's, it's called, this one is called Authorized King James Version of the Bible. That, that's, that's what this one is. That's what I'm using today. You can find any translation. This is just the one I prefer. I use it a lot. Well, you're old fashioned. Yes. Now, but I'm always in fashion. Hallelujah. <laughs> All the youth can sit down right there if you want. If you don't, you can stand. That's a, yeah, it's up to y'all. Um, Deuteronomy 30. Verse 19, I want all of the youth to hear this because I'm preaching to another generation. I'm very privileged to get to do that. In, look, look what Moses said here. Now look what Moses said, said here. Sherry, just take notice to that verse. It'll be very important to you in, in the days ahead. He says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Now, you're going to be able to speak this to somebody in some point. And that's all you tell them. Remember that. Just tell them you choose. Yes, sir. Yeah. Whatever that means to you, you'll know in the time. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore... Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now, I want you to, I, 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 they, they had no idea. I, I don't know if Katie could even possibly show that one scene. But if, if they could, I could show, I wanted to show you. I'm going to tell you either way. But it would just be good if you could see it. But nobody knew I was going to do this. Nobody. Well, God. But Moses said this. I set before you this day, life and death, blessing and cursing. This is what the Lord told him to tell the people. And we forget sometimes that when God speaks, he's prophesying as well as what he's saying in the moment. See, the, there's no word from God that ever dies. And that's where people get off on trying to interpret the prophetic prophecy. They think, well, it's for that time and it's not for this time. It's for all time. Do you know how supernatural the Bible is? Now, all the people that, that hate me and are critics, just this would be a good time you go make a sandwich. In, in, the, in the scripture, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, because you don't want to hear what the Bible says, you're, not going, you're going to rewrite it anyway. So in... The scripture is absolutely amazing 
And it's the only book of its kind. There is no lost books. Don't you see what lost books tell you? You can't trust the book you have if it's missing books. If you think it's missing something, where do you put your faith? You will only put your faith and you say, well, I can believe this, but what if the lost book says something different? And Satan knows this, so he always interjects doubt. There's the lost books. There's the Apocrypha. Okay. But it's not in the canon. Even though it tells some wonderful things. Hell, yeah, there's that. Oh, my God, man. I've heard, I heard somebody one time quote to me the book of Enoch over the Bible. I said, really? Really? How do you know what's inspired? There is a few passages in the scripture from the book of Enoch. A few. One in Genesis 6, I think. One in Jude. There's some different scriptures, but there's only a few. So whatever made it in is what's inspired. If it didn't make it in, it might be history on some things, but it, not if it don't agree with this. And then, well, then there's that book of Jasher. Really? There's a couple, one or so, you know, whatever. But if it didn't make it in, Well, I read the Talmud, but it didn't make it in. It may be great, and I study it. But remember, God was big enough to get you the whole thing in your hands by the end of time without, try, without you having to hunt for something else. There's 66 books, we call them. 66, and we call them here. You know, first, second, first, second, first, second. But if they're one book, you know, but this is the canon right here. God's not going to say something that's not here. I should get a bigger amen than that because there's an attack on that book like you've never seen before in your entire existence. And everybody's screaming about, and I'm not talking about you. You know, I'm just talking about in general. People start screaming about, oh, we got to go back. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time. And old time, old time, old time. And they're the first ones that scream. There's a lost book. Why don't you just give me that old time and just believe what it said? Right. Ain't nothing in here old time. It's all now. And I'm about to show you how. Y'all yeah, 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 are interested, surely. Because we're about to go into 25. I'm going to tell this, then I'm going to read this that the Lord gave me, if he lets me, and then I'm going to hand the mic to the pastor if she wants it. Here is, see in the Bible... If you look at history going forward, I'm talking about in the spirit, in the church, something you may have heard said before, and if you have, just act like it's news so that those around you will be excited. <laughs> but you, you know, going forward, you have the next thing on the agenda. The next thing in prophecy is the end of an age. When the church age ends, there'll be a catching away. After the catching away, you see, uh, you see a, a tribulation. At the end of the tribulation, you see the end of the tribulation where Jesus returns. Then you see the Antichrist taken and the false prophet and thrown into the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Then after a thousand years of millennial reign, he's loosed again for a little season to go tempt the nations. After that, he's cast forever into this lake. 
or he's cast into the abyss, but and then he's cast into forever into the lake of fire where the smoke ascends forever and ever. And then the scripture says God is all in all. Everything reverts back to him. Isn't that right? And that's what it says. Sure, it's what it says. And so, but Isaiah 46, 10 declares that God declares the end from the beginning and from the ancient times of things that haven't happened yet. Ecclesiastes says God requires that which is past. So if God declares the end from the beginning, Genesis is the book of beginning. So you should be able to read Genesis forward or backward and you're reading Revelation forward. And the Bible makes a full circle and joins at the end of Genesis 1 and Revelation 22. It meets again. And the scripture is redundant three times. It tells its own story three different times, word for word. You just don't know how to see it, but it's there. And so you, if, to prove it out, you just start going backward in Genesis. All you got to do is find the end of an age. Well, you find that in Noah's day. You find in yet seven days in Genesis 7, the Lord said the flood will come. So Noah and his family came in the boat, and if you start going backward, they, were, they came in the boat, the age closed, they were lifted up. The next thing, if you're going backwards, you should be able to find the uh, catching away. And you find Enoch being translated in Genesis 5. Then after that, you should find the tribulation period. You get to Genesis 4, you find a brother with a mark killing his brother without one. At the end of that, you find Jesus returning, putting the, uh, uh, you should be able to find that where he puts his foot on the head of the enemy. Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman will step on the head of the seed of the serpent. Then after that, you should be able to find uh, the, the millennial reign. Genesis chapter 2, everything's beautiful. The garden. Then after that, you should be able to find Satan loose for a little season. Again, to tempt the nations. Genesis 1, uh, verse 3, it says, And the earth became without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Then after that, he's cast it forever into the lake of fire. Then you should be able to find God is all in all. Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God. So you read it backwards and you saw it forward. And they'll meet at some point cover to cover. So everything was strategically chosen by the Lord. So when God says something, ears up and listen because he is prophetic. For the cry of another generation cries forth now. Tell me the mysteries. Tell us the mysteries. We'll live in them. We'll walk in them. We'll operate in them. Tell us the new generation cries. For we will do the things that those before us refused. For our eyes are open and we will see the truth. And we are tired of lies. So give us the mysteries. You can hear them cry. I will, says the Lord. The mysteries are yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. How about that? Wow. How about that? So we, we start to see. We start to see prophecy. We start to see things like that. We start to look at how the word is put together. And we see things like the Bible codes where the rabbis did that uh, 2,000 years ago. They were doing it by hand out of the, the Torah, and they would go through it. And what it means is that we call it the codes. It's the skip sequences. You know, every Hebrew letter, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, so forth, all the way to Tav, it reads from right to left. It has no vowels, even though it has the vowel sounds and markings that inflect vowels, or you can say them and so forth, but it has no real ones. And so you read it from right to left, and in it, they would 
would take the Hebrew scriptures because it's written with no vowels. It's all consonants. Like in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's all jammed up with no vowels. And so they would set the, they would go and count numbers, 50 Jubilee, go from the 50th, first letter to the 50th one, drop the 50th one down, the next 50, drop it down, the next 50, drop it down, and see what mysteries would spell out. And they would find the mysteries. And when the computer age came along, a guy began to do that, and he, started, he was watching his computer, and then all, only using numbers that represented something to the Jewish people. And it suddenly it fell out, started falling out. The different kinds of trees in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 2. He started to notice. Then he got on over to Genesis 6 and the flood of Noah. And it spelled out things like death, death camp, bloodthirsty, holocaust, Hitler. And the destruction of the world, Hitler was told. You get on over into certain passages and it starts talking about McVeigh, Oklahoma, Mura. And that's just a few. You start looking at it, Esther, May 10th, I think, 1944, something to that effect. What happened? Ten Nazis were hung for trying to annihilate Jews. Esther's about ten people who were hung for trying to destroy the Jewish race. Everything is found in the Scripture. You just don't know where to look. So when I get to be a, a, a stickler for the Word, that's why. What you hold in your hand is the breath of God breathed on paper. You see, this is not God, uh, idea of God. This is him in written form. Well, I don't believe that. I don't even care. I don't care anymore about that. It don't change it. So you start looking at things like that, and, and so they got curious, and, you know, they, they put in different rabbis' names just to see if it would find them about 39 different names or something and see if it could find one of them in the skip sequences it found them it found one it found all of them and told things about their life i think it revealed in the codes a, a policeman that went missing in tel aviv they it bible told where he was and they went and found his body Now, if there's a lost book, how did it do that? That name would have been lost. So you start looking at how the Bible is put together, and you start seeing how prophecy works. When somebody says, thus saith the Lord, he's not going to say anything that's not in his book. So you say, well, where is that in the book? Just like those names. You don't know where it's at, but it's there. It's there because you knew in your spirit. Man, I don't know where that is in the Bible, but that's God. I know that's God. I can hear it. You can feel it. I'm alone in here. It's real quiet, but I'm not alone. So you start looking at things like that. You start looking at it. You have to look at the Word. If you're going to get serious with the Word, or you can watch Matlock. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's up to the individual whether you want to see the Word, whether you want to see the mysteries, where you want to see where God is. I was standing in front of a group of politicians, and, and uh, well, not all of them were politicians, but there were, they were some there. And one of them was very well known. And I looked at them and I said, there's only one God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and almost silence fell over the room. When I talk about the Bible and only one God, they get real quiet. Well, the Koran don't do that. Neither does Confucius writings. It don't do that. Only the word of the living God. And when it gets into the book of Isaiah, one of the, one of the things that crossed it in the thing, and, and, and you could see where it crossed it. And it talks about the Messiah. It said, Jesus is my name. And those rabbis know that. Some of them knew that when they found it. Oh, you can find Kamala in places, Trump. You can find, it's all in those 
codes. Now don't go out and start looking for codes. I'm going to find them codes. But you start to look at things like that. Now when God talks, he talks. And he's wanting you to know. Isaiah started in prophecy in Isaiah 14 talking about the seed of the, uh, 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 speaking about, singing about the song of the man about himself. And there was a song that he's going to use to bring in the seed of the serpent. And Isaiah says, how did you fall from heaven, O Lucifer? Because you said this in your heart. And he starts telling what he said. And when he gets down to the certain place, he, he, you can see it. He said, this is how you fell past. This is what you did. And it's, it's talking about now. And then it spans into the nations of the future. All prophetic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See the past, present, and future. The Bible says he is The creatures that fly around his throne are full of eyes. They're trying to see into the depth of God. And they have four faces. Each face is a revelation of the Almighty. Each face is a revelation of a time that would come and a time that would be. It's a face of an ox, a face of a, of a man, a face of a flying eagle, a face uh, 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 of a lion. And it's all the four faces of God are the four aspects of who he is. And you even see it in the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph, uh, the Aleph, uh, Aleph bet. It's called Aleph to the Tav, the beginning the symbol of an olive in the Hebrew language going right to left. The symbol of the olive is the ox. The beginning of the sacrifice. The symbol of the tav is a cross. The end of the sacrifice. That's why Jesus issued a challenge. If you can make one jot or one tittle not come to pass to the devil, said you can beat me. You're going to have to beat the whole olive bed to do it. And four letters of the olive bet created everything you see in existence. Or three letters, four was the you. So you have this supernatural bone in your body that nothing will satisfy but the supernatural. You can't be satisfied with anything else. You try to fill it with, with drugs, alcohol, uh, perversion, whatever it may be. You're trying to fill it with toys and things and excitement or anything else you can find. But nothing fills that place inside you but God. And you're on a search for who he is. And his name is on the screen all the time. God in the flesh. Jesus. Yeshua. So you have, you, you're crying out for God. So start to listen for God. Now can you imagine? I'm going to address some things. Can you imagine? We're going to have this. You, can you imagine God sitting on his throne? That in itself is something. We're not talking about Jojo Marconi or whoever sitting on his throne. We're talking about God. <laughs> From whom all life flows. Who breathes out and never has to breathe in. <sighs> and sometimes if you turn your face to the wind, you go, oh, look at that. And you get a revelation. And so he's sitting on his throne. Can you imagine? Here comes these living creatures. And they start searching him. And one of them sees the lion so much that his face becomes a lion. He reflects. And he looks into, whoa. And he looks into God. And then the next an ox. The next a man. And the next a flying eagle. And then all at once, they can't see anything deeper, so they start developing eyes within their being, and those eyes are rolling around looking at God as they pass him by. You, you would look at those creatures and go, you'd start tiptoeing out. 
And these creatures develop the eyes trying to find something down inside God that only you can see. Only you can see it. You're in his image, in his likeness. You're his heirs. Now can you see what a degrading thing it is to put a demonic costume on a child? And send them to celebrate the one who was thrown out of heaven. People say, oh, you're just legal. No, I'm talking about bigger things than you imagine. Can you imagine? Take a Ouija board and put your hands on a piece of glass and ask the board a question. And let a demon slide it over the letters to tell you what it said. And in heaven you have this throne where these creatures are looking inside the creator himself. And you belong to that world and you're stooping to that one. It's bigger than you think. To celebrate the Lord of filth and reject the Lord of glory. Man, I don't worship that. I don't give a flying rat's rear end what you worship. And the devil don't care if you worship it or not. As long as you look like it. He's a legal devil. He's not spiritual. He's a spirit, but he's legalistic. All he wants you to do is create an atmosphere that he can move in. Youth pastors took their youth to see twilight. There was one person's house burned down right after they got back from that. Take them to see the Lord of the dead. And this is their youth group. Churches having haunted houses. Haunted houses. And you're going to throw your hands up and tell God how wonderful he is? And you're going to celebrate that? That? All those creatures are fallen beings that tried to destroy humanity and all life. And that's what they do. I'm not making it clear enough, so. So we, we look at things like that and we, we say. And people do, people, I don't, I, it, I, it don't, it's, it don't mean it to me. I don't care what it means to you. All Satan wants you to do is to keep the atmosphere because it means it to him. If there was a grizzly bear running at you and I saw him coming and I said, hey, there's a grizzly bear running at you and you looked out there and went, I, I just don't look at it that way. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't care how you look at it. He's getting closer every moment of, uh, that I'm talking to you. Well, I just don't see it that way. Well, you can see him face to face soon. And then tell him you don't see it that way. Are, are you hearing me? Yeah. And I just, I don't, it don't matter what you don't. He does. And he can operate that in that. You ever notice the feeling you get at Christmas? When you start playing Christmas music, oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord. And, and, and it just starts changing the atmosphere. 
And you have the manger scenes. And you have all of this. You created an atmosphere of love that God, have you know, never noticed around that time of year, it feels different outside. It's because everybody's celebrating life and love. Well, what do you think happens at places like Halloween? You've got bloody handprints on your window when somebody walks up to your door like somebody inside was murdered and they just they slid their hands down the window. That glorifies God, doesn't it? Christians will fight you over that. They will. How can, how can images of people eating people glorify God? And yet you put it in your yard every year? We shouldn't even have to be talking about it. So you, you begin to see you're quiet. You don't know what I'm going to say next. So you begin to, you have to look at the spiritual is what I'm getting at. You have to. You have, because you are a spirit. You, you don't have a spirit. You are one. You have a soul. Your mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a body. That's why Paul said, I pray that your whole uh, spirit, soul, and body be sanctified and kept blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus. Well, we're going to have a, you know, people sit around and have uh, seances. That's called necromancing in the Old Testament. It carried the punishment of death. Shows you what the harvest in the spirit for that is. Well, Brother Robin, you're talking about too heavy a stuff. Yeah, I am because I'm talking about life and death now. And I'm talking about to your spirit. Listen to it in the spirit. Hear what I'm telling you. Then you start looking at it in the soulish realm. Calculate it out and think about it. He's a legal devil. He's looking for legal atmosphere and legal tender to bring, to, to try you and accuse you. All he wants, well, people start talking. He'll get them to talking. Oh, my back's killing me. My head's about to bust open. My, my, I, I'm, I'm scared to death. Are you going down there? I'm afraid not. And on and on and on it goes. Death, fear, suffering, sickness, and you just confess it constantly, constantly, constantly. You do know this is a word planet created by words, spoken by the Almighty God. You're in His image, in His likeness. So when you speak out words, you're creating a world around you for something to operate good or bad and so you start talking death words all around you and you can say all you want I don't mean them that way the devil don't care you said it he has a right to hand it to you that's what I'm getting at now I, I gotta go on with this because I didn't mean to preach at all I call heaven and earth to record this day against you was Katie able to find that on short notice oh did she Okay. Whenever I tell her, okay. All right, I call heaven and earth to record or record this against you. Now, this is Moses. The Lord's speaking through him, the prophet Moses, and he's telling the, the people of Israel, God's people. He said, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He said, I set this before you today. And then he says what to choose. Therefore, choose life that thou and thy seed may live. You know, and I, I know that, and I've, I've preached that my whole life since I've been born again. I, I preach that. You stand up and choose. You choose the blessing. You choose the curse. And it's true. You get either one. You choose. But it was a prophecy and it was a prophecy God gave, and it showed back up again in your time. 
in front of the United Nations, Benjamin Netanyahu began to talk about something. And he started talking about, he first of all, he started talking about Moses. And he started talking about what Moses said. Then he stands in front of the all over 190 nations. And he's standing there. 400 of them got up and representatives and walked out. But he stands there and when he gets, he starts in on it. And he says, let me show you the blessing. And he holds it up. And then he says, let me show you the curse. And he holds it up. And he holds them out there and says, choose. Whoa. Whoa. The prime minister, we would say a modern king of Israel, stands up and says, I set before you this day life and death. And Netanyahu is a prophet, whether anyone knows it or whether he even knows it. I set it before you this day, life and death, blessing and cursing. You choose and God came in that moment and weighed the nations. I kept telling you that Israel was the balancing scales that weigh all the nations. And the weighing time happened just the other day. Now show it, Katie. I don't know what we got because it was unplanned. But whatever you got, you did a great job. Just, just put it up there. Ladies and gentlemen, as Israel defends itself against Iran in the Seven Front War, the line separating the blessing and the curse could not be more clear. This is the map I presented here last year. It's a map of a blessing. It shows Israel, Israel and its Arab partners forming a land bridge connecting Asia and Europe between the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Across this bridge, we will lay rail lines, energy pipelines, fiber optic cables, and this will serve the betterment of two billion people. Now look at this second map. It's a map. Look at the second map. It's a map of a curse. It's a map of an arc of terror that Iran has created and imposed from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean. Iran's malignant arc has shut down international waterways. It cuts off trade. It destroys millions, destroys nations from within, and inflicts misery on millions. On the one hand, on the one hand, a bright blessing, a future of hope. On the other hand, a dark future of despair. And if you think this dark map is only a curse for Israel, if you think that, then you should think again. Because Iran's aggression, if it's not checked, will endanger every single country in the Middle East and many, many countries in the rest of the world. Because Iran seeks to impose its radicalism well beyond the Middle East. That's why. It funds terror networks on five continents. That's why it builds ballistic missiles for nuclear warheads to threaten the entire world. For too long, the world has appeased Iran. It turns a blind eye to its internal repression. It turns a blind eye to its external aggression. Well, that appeasement must end. And that appeasement must end now. Did you see it? He held up the blessing and the curse. Now, if you don't think you're in biblical times, this is what the Lord prophesied when he did it once before. He was prophesying it would come again in 24 and that the leader of Israel would hold up the blessing and the curse and tell the nations, choose, choose. That was their choosing time. This is the time of the choosing. This is the time when you choose. You choose the blessing or you choose the curse. And it's all the way from the United Nations 
down to your everyday life of everyday living. This is the time when evil and good are held up before the populace. But more than that, held up before God's people. The world does what it does. But God's people are a different lot. God's people are his heirs. And he's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to all Christian people everywhere. He spoke to the nations at the United Nations. Can, can you not see, could you not picture Moses standing there? Holding up the blessing and the curse and saying, you choose. You choose. And then he tells you what to choose, and he did too. If you watch the rest of it, he keeps on about this blessing and this curse. And he gives the nations a choice to make the choice of the blessing. So it goes from nations. Those that do not choose to stand with Israel has automatically by default chosen the curse. And the curse is what they will have. All the way down the line, I could tell you of spiritual things, but I don't know if you want to hear them. The spiritual things, there are four classes of spirit that you fight. Paul said in Ephesians 6, put it up on the screen, starting in verse 10. Put this up quickly for everyone to see. Ephesians 6, 10. I can quote it, but I want you to see it. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. My brethren, my brethren. He's talking to his family, God's people. I am a prophet. I am standing here pleading with you. Before this next move happens, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he says, Next verse, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the cunnings of the devil. The cunnings. He has plots, plans, and schemes. And he's got them put out against, if he can fool nations. Have you not noticed that no matter, Israel can't do anything right in front of these nations. The United Nations stinks from the bowel of hell. Nothing you can do. He, in the first of his speech, he described what Hamas did. He described what happened. And yet they still condemn him. If nations can be blinded, do not think there's not a blindfold for you. The Bible said if it's possible, he would fool even the very elect. That would be you, God's people. I know he's talking to Israel, but that also includes you and I. We're grafted in. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. You may. It didn't say you would. It's given you the choice. But he's saying, I'm equipping you with what it takes. You can win against the cunnings of the devil. But the cunnings are on different levels. They're different. It depends on what realm you're in. It depends on what sphere of life you walk in. The United Nations is the ultimate deception. 
That's where the WEF, who has the occultic witches, blow on their heads. That's where CERN, that's where the dedication and the recreation of the, of the ceremony of Pan, that's where all of that's sanctioned. That's where all of that happens. That's where all of that flows from is in that highest echelon of power. It's a deception to the nations. That's why the Paris Olympics opened with a blasphemous last supper. Why would it show a blasphemous last supper with a transgender for Jesus? Why? It's because there has to be an apostate atmosphere and an apostate church for the Antichrist to come. So that's why you see all the ugly and the evil showing up all around the world. He's trying to create an apostate atmosphere, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. says, and that if he can't do it, he can't come. But if he can, he said he can't come unless there's a great falling away. And so they opened the ceremony of the world games with Baal in London, the bull that came out. Women in chains, crystals everywhere. And then they come out with the Paris Olympics and the Last Supper, a blasphemous picture. And then they, they show it as it opens to the blasphemous picture. Here comes the, the horseman of the apocalypse of Revelation 6 riding across the water with the flowing ribbon garment off of his body. The Antichrist. And it shows him moving across toward Paris. And when he gets there, a fallen being comes down and they meet and he hands him the banner. And this fallen being, is, uh, suddenly the bottomless pit opens and these hordes come up and a portal is raised up out of the ground. And it's the last ring of the Olympic rings. Revelation 9 says a fallen being comes down, is given a key and he opens the bottomless pit and out of it comes the hordes of hell and they have a king over them named Apollyon and when they closed the Paris Olympics they hung a piano upside down vertical put a man on the piano playing a hymn but the hymn was called the hymn of Apollo and this is in the higher echelon CERN is built on the temple of Apollo Oh, I don't believe that. It don't change it. Next verse. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Do you hear that? It's not flesh and blood that's your enemy. He said, but we're against principalities. Look closely. Principalities. Say it. Principalities. Powers. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. These are four classes of spirit. And do not think principalities are the top. They're the lowest. And it goes up these steps to the spiritual wickedness in the high places. These are the spirits, the, the spiritual wickedness in high places are what's deceiving the nations. And their mouthpiece is the UN. And the UN has one charter. You say, well, they have a lot of ideas. One keeps coming up. Destroy Israel. Destroy Israel. Israel's condemned a hundred times to any other nation's one. And they won't listen to them and they won't condemn the horrendous attacks. It's because Israel, Satan knows he's got to deal with them. He wants Jerusalem. Why would he want it? It's the city of the great king. It was Adam's home. Of whom he wanted to be. And so he he's operates in that high realm. And then it steps down the ladder. Rulers of the darkness of this world. 
In other words, the ideas are passed down to them and that word means deception. It's a deception. They make something look one way when it's another. The rulers of the darkness take the grand plan and put it into that. And they twist it. Up becomes down. Down becomes up. Boy becomes girl. Girl becomes boy. Uh, marry a moose. Twist it. Create apostate atmosphere. Then it steps down to the next level. Powers. Powers. Powers is where the political realm is. Powers is where presidents, governors, mayors, kings, this is where they all operate at, is in this realm where these spirits affect them called powers. Powers, the powers, it's, it's where these spirits are. It's in Revelation 20, uh, Revelation 20, where it says, and, and there were, I saw the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan listed from the lowest to the highest. And that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan. That old serpent, prince of, the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, the liar. And you start to see these things. And then politicians start passing. These powers tell the politicians this, 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 this. And it's coming from the top down the ladder. Until you see things like that conversation Carrie Lake had that was captured on, on audio. Some of you ought to look that up where they, she was offered anything to quit. And she said, no. And everything operates in that political power. Powers. And it's twisted. And the Republican Party, the majority of them, becomes the illusion that you have a chance while they've already agreed with the other side, the reality. And it's called sleight of hand. And so Nancy Pelosi said, all we need is 10. She said, all we need is 10. She said, we're not like the presidency. We don't, we're not like that. All we want is 10. She said, we got enough red to blue to do it. In other words, traitors. Not everybody, but a large part of them. The swamp is deeper than you think. And so you, red to blue, red to blue, we, we've got this. And then she said something that ought to just make everybody just do like this. She said, we are very, we are reptilian and cold-blooded. Whoa. I didn't say that. That's their words. Brother Robin said that. No, I didn't. She said it. And then it drops from powers. You ready now? Are you ready? To the populace. What's passed from the political comes into our world. The populace, that's principalities. Princes over palities. These are the spirits that was at the madman of Gadara. This was those, the populace. And they're sold a, a while. They're sold the same lie in your world and in our everyday lives. Because without the power and the consent of the governed, you can't govern. <laughs> so suddenly, the populace begins to believe this big lie. I don't know that we believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people do. Oh, yeah, a lot of people do. I mean, when you believe that increasing taxes this much is going to prosper you, you, you just, you've lost it. 
I mean, that's just crazy. That don't even work. And if you're going to, you know, the populace fights to put litter boxes in bathrooms and schools. Why? So they can bring their pets to school? No, so your children who thinks they're a pet can use it. Can you imagine how disturbing that is to other kids? Dropping everything to the level of a beast. It's in the, it's, it gets into the populace until you can, you can see it. It's, 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 it's Satan don't care. He's a spirit. He's got all the time he needs. He's outlived every ancestor you have. And he finally got in something like, uh, it, it manifests in the populace all the time. People just don't see it. They don't want to see it. In the early centuries of this, of man, in what we call civilized centuries, there used to be a, a thing where druids would do. And they would call, they would go around on Samhain and and they called it that, and it was the night. They believed on a certain night that the veil between the spirit world and the natural world was at its thinnest. And it was on that night they could contact the dead. And so they would go around from, from prominent castle to prominent house, whatever the lords and dukes were, and, all, and they would come up to the houses, and they would demand a sacrifice that night, a young girl. And so if they refused to give it to them, then they would put a curse on the house that night and somebody there they believed would die. But if they gave it to them, they would leave a, a, a turnip or something with a face carved in it and some of the candles with hum, made out of human fat. And they would leave it there and it would protect the house from spirits that night. And they called that a treat. And they called, if you didn't give them what they wanted, it was a, they played a trick on you and demons came there. That's where all that came from. And the mask, that came from something so graphic, if I told it on YouTube, they'd probably cut it off. Don't matter what kind of mask, just mask. Just put it on. And practice that. Romans, I don't, I don't know. That sounds so silly. Roman soldiers believed it. Roman soldiers, they would capture them and hang them up in a wicker basket. And they said, this is what was said. They would call elfin fire out of the ground and burn them alive. They, they believed it. So all of that's where this practice came from. And it's sold into the populace. And the populace starts mingling with the darkness on one night a year. And people don't survive that night. There's a lot of people that you will never know that has no way of knowing they were ever here or gone. That just won't make it that night. And now you wonder why the Long Island witch is coming to Birmingham on what date? I don't know what date it is, but she's coming there to teach people how to contact their dead relatives coming on in October. Imagine, why would you do that? And why Birmingham? Well, it could be because you got them 40-ton buns of that Vulcan standing up over there, mooning Homewood night and day. Well, what's wrong with the Vulcan? I don't know. He's Zeus's son banished to hell that in Greek mythology that was so ugly Zeus wouldn't let him in the, in the public. So they banished him to hell and he's there making weapons for, against, to fight with. That's who he is. Whoa. I thought it was Dr. Spock on Star Trek. <laughs> no, Leonard Nimoy canceled a lot of that out when he looked at them and they said, you're, you're supposed to be this alien creature. They said, can you give us some kind of alien instead of a handshake? Could you do something? 
and Leonard Nimoy being Orthodox Jewish. He remembered, and I've heard him tell it. He said when we would go into synagogue and we would come in on the day, he said there's a certain part of the service where the high priest comes out and everybody has to bow their head and close their eyes and the high priest does like this over the people and the Shekinah glory shows up in the room and it said we all believed if we looked we'd die and God would look through the windows and so they said can you come up with something he said how about this Shalom the letter Shin the map of Jerusalem. So what, what, what did he say every time he did that? Live long and prosper. Shalom. <laughs> Come on, y'all. So, but, but that, that Vulcan down in Birmingham, they, found, they find animals regularly sacrificed, thrown out at its feet. And I remember when its buns was rotting. I remember that. It was falling apart. You think I'm kidding you. Now you go to Homewood and look up and he, he's mooning you. <laughs> Zeus's son is supposed to be in hell. That's what that torch is. In the magic city. Oh, you're going to get in real trouble now, brother Robert. I, you know, I, I seem like I stay in it. But, but, but do you see how it's sold? And people don't see anything wrong with that. And they're not even thinking about it. That don't make people evil. It just makes people used to something. They just get used to it. There's a goat man at Five Points South. Well, he don't mean anything. Well, well let's just look at him a minute. He's a human being sitting there, a human body, but he's got a goat's head. He's got a witch's tea in his right hand and an owl that they use in the ceremonies of reincarnation and so forth, sitting on it. All the animals are sitting around him. The whole place is in the shape of a pentagram. And he's got a book in one hand. It's called the Book of Life. And he's down there reading it. That's just probably culture. Probably had nothing to do with the occult. Really. I remember when a bunch of preachers got together and come against that, and when they did, that fountain cracked. It cracked. <laughs> and started drained all the water out. I remember when Vulcan was falling apart, and they come and ask everybody to give a donation to rebuild him for a penny. If everybody would just give a penny, we could stick his butt back together. That's what they did. I'm not kidding you. Hey, who remembers this with me? I mean, I'm, is anybody here that was, y'all remember that? It, it happened, did it not? So maybe that's one reason she's coming. Or maybe it's not just that. Maybe the battle between good and evil approached. Maybe there's such believers in Birmingham and such believers around this part in Alabama. Maybe there's so much spiritual activity that believers are absolutely strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And maybe they're all over around Birmingham. And maybe they're standing up and hell knows I've got to do something. They're going to run me off the face of this planet if I don't do something. And we're going to stand up on that night and begin to proclaim Jesus is Lord. And there'll be churches big ones, little ones, and the ones in houses everywhere across the state, across the city, standing up with the power of the Lord and in the power of His might. All it tells me is hell is running scared. It's running scared. It can't seem to get it going. It does it don't, it don't know what to do. Send the biggest witch we've got. Well, we bind those spirits operating with her on that night and cut them off. There's a lot of surprises in the spirit that night. 
So can you see how hell tries to get us to get used to it? Because there's a different deception on every level. Are you with me? It's just a different deception on every level. But the Lord came. If you have the still, Katie, if you can make a still and just freeze it if you have to, of Netanyahu holding up both of those signs and, and picture Exodus, I mean Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, and picture Moses saying, I set before you this day. We've never had a, a world leader stand up and do that. It should have woke every believer up. It's not crazy because you won't touch darkness. That ha that's not crazy. That's not wrong that you won't do that. It's really reality. It's what you're supposed to do. Do you remember? And listen, you got to remember... I love Alabama. I are one of those. <laughs> and this is, if, if, if the South is the Bible belt, then Alabama's the buckle. I know what goes on in Montgomery. I know in the natural and in the spirit. I know believers down there that would blow your mind if you knew who they were who stand up strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Now, I'm not kidding you. I've seen one of the top officials, one that I can't say who, can't say where, can't say what, but I watched him as he stood up when all those storms were going to ravage Alabama. And he stood up and said, with this authority that I have, in the name of Jesus, I render these things helpless. Stop. And, buddy, it stopped. I mean, it went another direction altogether. Who was it? I ain't telling you. But you can rest your mind that there are powerful believers in Birmingham, in the surrounding counties, in high, there's, there's powerful believers in some of the liberal news stations in Birmingham. You just don't know them. They're believers. If it wasn't for all the power of God and uh, radio stations, hallelujah. So did we have that? Yeah, see that? Look at that. Is that biblical or what? The leader of Israel saying, I'm setting before you this day the Israeli flags on his lapel. The Hebrew God of the Bible, the God of the Hebrew Bible says, I'm setting before you this day blessing and cursing, life and death. You choose. And so the nations were given a choosing point. Isn't that something? And I don't know if it was that same day, all of a sudden, the head of Hezbollah was totally annihilated while he was talking. The Lord has said it before you today, life and death, blessing and cursing. Pick up the Bible and start living on purpose again. Living on purpose. I remember growing up in the Missionary Baptist Church. When somebody got saved, they'd stand them down front and everybody in the whole building would come shake their hand. We just want to congratulate you for being saved. That was the most beautiful thing you ever saw. It was that real to them. This word 
is a real word from God. Listen close that you may hear it. For the berakha, the blessing of the Lord, has come to your eyes, in your ears, and within your reach. Reach into the blessing, says the Lord, and partake of my goodness, for I am goodness, and I will bless your home, your family, your children, and your grandchildren. Reach into the blessing, says the Lord, and go ahead and partake of the goodness of God. For it is the goodness of God that draw men to repentance and not the wicked. For the wicked has nothing to draw with except death and destruction. I set before you this day, says the Lord. Please put it back. Life and death, blessing and cursing. And it is to be chosen now from the top all the way to the populace. For this is the turning point of history, the inflection point of time. Hallelujah. Now, you can be seated. I want to read this, and then I'm, I'm, that's all the Lord has told me, and I haven't really proofed it, so I don't know how my writing is. It's trying to read my writing. You don't have, know how, what a challenge that is. Hear the word of the Lord. A countdown from Harry Truman has begun. It is a countdown that will include all nations. A countdown that many will say does not exist. Yet it does exist, says the Lord. I made the clock that it's on. This countdown is about Israel and Gurim. Gurim. Take heed that the countdown is not allowed to continue. For many are not ready, and they need time to get ready. Can world leaders affect time and times? Yes, says the Lord. For I have given the earth to the children of men. What Harry Truman did started a countdown that was stopped but now it has started again the nations have let iran and hezbollah start it again stop it while you can what clock what clock you may ask the clock of destiny the clock of nations determined by israel and no other nations i says the lord have now offered you time. If you choose the blessing, if not, the clock continues. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Listen to the sound of the Ayatollah falling down. Tick, tock. It begins again with the determination. Of who is Israel's friends. Tick tock. Will the watch stop? Not before an explosion takes place. And fear is on every face. Tick tock. Tick. Get ready, says the Lord. For the clock is what needs fixed. Satan thinks to change times and laws. And to do this, he tries to make the clock run. Tick, tock, tick. It all has begun. How can we make it stop, you ask? How can we avoid? You must not let the United Nations create an abyss and avoid. Frenchy, they say, France, Belgium, and Lithuania. Are you sane? Should the clock be allowed to finish, you could not stand the pain. I have all the time I need, says the Lord, and I can give it to you, O nations of the earth. The multicolored flock, you do not have a shepherd. The clock of Harry Truman is a time of a great picture 
that is waiting to be poured. Rushed it will be a pitcher of wrath. Wait until the appointed time and it will be a pitcher of refreshing. For I will give Israel a great refreshing. Will, ye, o ye, will you, O ye nations, be a part of the refreshing? If you would, then wait. Then wait. Push it and its misery. The leader of France and Canada are in the crosshairs of time. Take heed, you two. Take heed, you two have done enough says the Lord. And that was the word of the Lord. And he came to me and said these things. What does it all mean? Time will tell. Some will take it immediately and start searching it. But he said those things. And so, take heed to this time and choose well. For choosing is put out now to the world. From the top all the way to the populace. Choose. It's not just about choosing just the things we talked about. It's about choosing darkness over light. Choose wise. Give your seed a chance to live. Give them opportunity to exist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give them a chance to thrive. Did you hear what the Lord said? He said, if you push it, it'll be a pitcher of misery. If you wait, it'll be a refreshing. That's amazing, isn't it? Come, Pastor, you're, and take the mic, and whatever. We're not, you know, we're not on a time clock here. We're only on the time of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Go get my... I just have a, a passage.